Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Disco Elysium Part 32. I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying right now. It would never happen. He'd never come back. King Rigi abandoned us. He went to a different kingdom, but you're wrong. Here I am. Disco Elysium. Back in the throne. Ready to continue. You ready with me? Well, let's keep going. So I cannot lie. I do not remember... What was going on? I'm, I can't lie, I barely remember how to play. It's been over a year since I've hopped on here. Over a year. And uh, don't mind me as I, as I get my buttons back down. All right, here we go. We got some investigations in our journal. Uh, investigate doomed commercial area, search for the malignant entity, confront the pigs and get your gun back. Someone's been running around with your sidearm. You must meet here near the old fish at 2200. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's getting close to there. Um, yeah. We got a couple, we got a little bit of time before that happens. Um, find someone with technical expertise to contact the coalition. I see refuse to talk about her friends. Maybe she'll open up later after you've helped them set up the nightclub. Noi doesn't want to talk to you. Signs are not in sync. Guess you need to help him and his friends. The working class woman you met in front of the books are admitted that her husband is missing. Chances are the guy is drinking somewhere with his buddies. Find him and bring him home if possible. So I got a lot of stuff here uh, going on. Take on la responsabilidad. Find someone with technical. Oh, yeah. um, bring the offsite copy back to Suna. Okay, so we got a lot happening here. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember who most of these things or people are. So we're just going to start talking with the Ravers nightclub. Plan. Oh, she's the one. In, she's inside the church. Okay. Come on. We're going back this way. What am I holding? What is equipped? Uh, an advanced pry bar. I thought I was holding like a Walmart, like not Walmart, but you know those those signs that the uh, the sign flippers like when they're outside of like uh, like Pizza Hut or something, and you got the people in the costume and they're throwing their little signs around. I thought that's what I was holding. To put some respect on me. All right, Suna, uh, I'm back. I got everything that you need, girl. Yes. What is it? Uh, about the offsite cop you asked me to bring. Yes. I brought you the filament. Is this the filament you're looking for? I found a note from the ice bear fridge. It said the offsite copy had been moved to a safer place. Thanks. Looks like it's the one. Uh, what's going to happen now? Now I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. She's already inserted the filament into the radio computer's core, ready to close the door. Wait, no. That's dangerous. She shouldn't do it. Oh, wait. Don't put it in yet. It might be dangerous. What are you even hoping to find? <laughs> no. It's not dangerous. Just depressing. How do you know? I have a theory. Lintel was able to divine the anomaly's location from this broken copy. I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The papers start filling out with ink, soaking it in a gleaming blackness. Not a single line of data stands out. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. Now what? Something's very wrong with that filament memory. Please just stop. Stop playing with this thing. Sona doesn't reply. Her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something. For her morning star. Eyes scouring the millimeters. Here. I found it. Hold Can't on. Can't see anything. She's behind the keyboard now, typing in some numbers that only she understands. The terminal beeps and the light inside starts pulsing like a glowing heart. Can I do anything? I'm still not sure it's a good idea tinkering with the unknown. Shh. Just give me a second. I'm almost... She clocks up her typing speed. I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. There's joy in her voice as she bumps her fist into the air. You did it? You found the coordinates? 
Oh my god, congratulations. So where is it? Where in your two millimeter hole in the world? I found the coordinates. <laughs> she lets out a celebratory laugh. She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Oh my god, congratulations. Thank you. She yells back with a grin. There. In the swallow. She points at the other end of the church where a group of water bowls forms a ritualistic arch. Think you can help me again? She tilts her head, eyes sparkling. Sure. I need you to go move those water bowls for me. I need to double check my calculations. You like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third bowl two centimeters to the left, and the fourth bowl five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Okay. So we're looking for water bowls here. Um, move the water bowls to the right position. Report back. What'd she say? The the the. She's. It's awfully silent again, as if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk-drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. Move the third bowl from the left two centimeters, move the fourth bowl to the left five centimeters. It moves like a ghost, without creating a single trace of sound. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. Come on, man, shake the your hands. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across the hall. You're welcome. Time to run back, or maybe walk. This is a sacred place, after all. That's true. Gotta keep my composure. Come on, Kim. Don't you walk too fast now. Yes, what is it? I uh, move the water bowls to the right position, just like you asked. What next? Craig, everything should be aligned now. She stops biting into her chapped lip. Miss know it all is hesitating. What's wrong? Yeah, uh, nothing. Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Wait, why did you have your headphones on mute in the first place? Honestly, honestly, I'm a little scared. Isn't it going to be just silence and nothing else? I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? She turns to face you, the mainframe throwing shadows on her chin. What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... She grows silent, her, fairy, her face very pale in the cold light of electricity. What? You're overthinking this. You're right, we should be cautious. We don't know what we're dealing with here. I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Like that evil ink that filled the printout, erasing coherence and meaning. Uh, maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. It's scary, but we just have to face it. Hey, I don't think I want to do it anymore. It seems too dangerous. Yeah, you're right. Let's do it. She puts on her oversized headphones, ready to press unmute on the keyboard. The lieutenant takes a step back. Oh no, he knows something. And then, nothing. Oh. Nothing happens as Sona Loken and Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. Can you hear anything? She doesn't answer. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus, one hand cupping the headphone. Well... Damn it! She lets out a loud sigh before tearing off her headphone. She's still avoiding your gaze. Come on, did you hear anything? Well, at least the world still seems to be alright. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happened. Let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. What do you mean nothing happened? Did you find the swallow? No. She rests her face on her hands, massaging her forehead. No, my hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. 
Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this... This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones. See if you can hear anything. But don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence? You're sure there's more to it? This can't be it. You should have a listen. Legendary? What is wrong with me? My perception is low. All you hear is your own is my morale. Heavy and hoarse from all the nights spent drinking. It's the breath of an old man. But there's something else. There has to be. Something big. Something unexpected. Something new. Yet to be discovered. Ghosts. Speak to me. When was the last time this world had anything new to say? Well, did you hear anything? No, nothing. It's just silence. I'm not sure. There seems to be something there, but I couldn't really make it out. Yeah. Her voice is bitter with disappointment. The lieutenant looks down at the floor, as if to say, you're wasting time here. Relax, Kim. Maybe the speed freaks can help you with this. Go talk with Andre. Okay. Okay, so big Andre, be coming for you, brev. Let's go, uh, can I get out this way? No. Uh, figure out why Suna couldn't hear anything through her headphones. So talk to... See what Andre has to say. About all this. Because they're trying to have that disco party in here. I do remember that. I know we were trying to jam. Hey. Ooh, ooh. Icky, icky, icky. Icky, icky, icky. A pile of nasal sprays. Brand name, Nosafet Ultra. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes. Lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Incremental progress! Yeah! Uh, is this a. Oh, that's a white check. Okay. Um, maybe your body can tell you. You know it. Hey, your let's go! should vibrate. In your heart that's alone. And in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every core day animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody. A good melody is what makes the song really stick so that you can get it out of your head anymore. Point at your head. Wow, okay. We should stop with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know. I was thinking you would know. Nowhere. I'm not going to become some sort of anodic cop too. I've got enough copper, copper types already. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. <laughs> he feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of dance music. Okay, I'll look into it. It's an official capacity. It's up to the police to make the beats go harder. All right, if, I'll see if I come up with something on my own. The citizen investigation. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Fan H Jam. Yeah, maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. Street hawker. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, cop man. Cup man! Hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve Van Eyck's jam. Tape! Yeah! Spin the tape until the space escape! Yeah! I got you this banging mega mix. Give him the great door gunner mega mix. Alright! He snatches the tape from your hand and attaches it to the empty rail slot. One hand on his headphones, he listens to the audio. Then, shaking his head, he says. No! No, no! This is gonna make people scared! Keep it positive! Keep the love in the house! Okay, never mind. Normal! Stable! Normal! Stable! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'll get you a different one. Huh? I see you here again. Offside, man. Did I mention getting us into the church would help? This young speed freak seems to know a lot about signs. 
Could he be the techno tinkerer you're looking for? His look is intensely suspicious. Could you use your sign sense to help me contact the coalition warship? I don't think so. Big bad frequencies are extremely negative. Thought suppression, dream implantation, memory revision, pretty out there stuff. Not sure I want to get involved with it. There is fear there, but also curiosity. He just needs a reason to help you. Besides, our own signs aren't even synced yet. So how am I supposed to get you synced up with a big bed? It don't make any sense, you lover. I guess. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Maybe everything isn't quite as you told. Take a moment to analyze. Uh... Okay. Damn. So the Speed Freaks want to start a club for dance music. That much checks out. Youths like music. You feel as though you might have liked music more when you were young, too. But you digress. Mm-hmm. And then there's the Narcomania. Indeed. So one of them came upon the abandoned church. They want to turn it into a club for dance music. But agents of Narcomania have overrun it. You shudder to think of all the narco they must have already consumed in there. Narco is bad. Plus, and it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in this smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. Their story checks out. All in all, you really can't tell what that mean programmer grandma was talking about. <laughs> I guess I have to come back once I put some skill points into logic. Goodbye, officer. Bye. All right. Well, that didn't help. Uh, find a tape with a melody for Egghead. Um, and that's at the pawn shop, right? Maybe we can do that. Okay, man. You got any uh nice tapes I can have? Hello again. How can I help you? Is Roy high? And if yes, then what is he on? I'd like to buy back the commemorative pin. No, I need this stuff. Wow, a very large red T-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding toward you, a giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Heimdall burning. That's a rad man from Heimdall t-shirt you got there. Oh yeah, man. I don't usually carry printed tees, but this one was just pure exemplar. He must be a serious man from Heimdall fan. We have a lot in common. I'm a big fan of the man from Heimdall too. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I'm a fan. But I do think the Hume Dalaman saga is an integral part of our shared reality. Most people don't think that the man from Hyomdal really existed, but they're wrong. What did you mean, the man from Hyomdal was real? I mean, even if the man from Hyomdal didn't exist before the adventure novels, the stories have made it so that he has. It's simple, really. Okay. He sounds incredulous. You sound skeptical. It's not that complicated. All that's required is a more robust understanding of cause and effect. Besides, I've been to Kotla, though not quite as far north as the Hjelmdal, and watched northern lights travel across the sky. Very unique energetic tides there. His theory isn't exactly incoherent. But its logic does suggest some unusual neural activity. Interesting. Very, very unique energies, indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. How much are you selling this t-shirt for? Two real. That's it? That's dirt cheap. Yeah. Couldn't you just give it to me for free, then? Cool, I'll think about you it. You should. 
Okay, I've thought it over and I want to buy the t-shirt. Welcome to Hyundal, officer. Yay. Let's see, where is it at? The man from Hyundal is standing in front of a burning village, dual wielding his ever-present divine handers. His muscles look ready to burst out of the two-dimensional print and into your three-dimensional life. Not gonna put it on now, but you never know. If I need a physical instrument or shivers, you know what I'm doing. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags. Others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Dig up a truly cool figurine in the box under the table. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. What is this? Oh, that's the headless phone rider. Who? The headless phone rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. He points at the cavitated figurine. Fifty cents. Bargain price. Ooh. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. All right, I'll take it. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. He grins. That was a very smooth salesman's grin that almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. Okay. Now I got a figurine as well. The plastic headless found rider sits atop his equally plastic bull, his posture indicating either desperation or pride comes as a set with the infamous found cap for which he lost his head. The head is not included. Yeah, we never know who uh, might be looking for that. Alright. All the old boom. Okay, is there... A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. 700? Alright, we're out of here. Hello again. How can I help you? Oh, whoa. 83. Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. He's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Parolidon? What is that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and... It makes your eyes turn yellow. Is it just me or is it really warm in here? Look around. Step closer. Sir, could you take off your sunglasses? I'd like to check your eyes. Get straight to the point. So where does a man get pearled on these days? I try to keep the shop at a comfortable temperature. There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. Say, what's with the triangles on your vest? I was. I was with the emergency relief brigade. You know, after the people's pile disaster. Coughs as if to mark his words. I had to take Peroladon for radiation sickness. That's what you were hinting at just now, wasn't it? He's taken for mental and emotional. Not physical pain these days. The people's pile, what's that? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you, too. The people's pile was a Type U particle decay generator that failed immediately after entering service. Releasing radioactive waste into River Esperance. What is a particle decay generator? A primitive nuclear reactor, also called a pile. Why is it called the People's Pile? Construction began during the Commune of Revachon. The people continued work on it after the Commune fell. 
They wanted a cheap source of energy for Rivershaw West. Needless to say, things didn't work out. Why did it fail? An emergency valve defect resulted in steam pressure blowing the turbine, taking the fuel containment vessel up in the explosion. Both the faulty design and lack of finances contributed to the catastrophe. Tell me more about this emergency relief brigade you were a part of. We were an all volunteer force, self organized, tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. On the patch, gamma radiation lines crossed with a red drop of blood. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. He looks at the spiraling light and stops. It must have been tough, radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. An early death. Cancer, mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it that the generator failed? No one's. Everyone's. He sighs and shakes his head. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? How did you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... He shrugs. Thank you for telling me. I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Care to share your pearl with Have me? Have you tried it before? It's almost like he's worried for you. The lieutenant steps away, pretending to admire some of the knickknacks on display. Looks like he doesn't want to get involved. Go ahead then, he thinks. As long as you can walk straight, I oh. don't care. He won't be your knock, but he won't be thrilled about this either. Mm. I think I've tried it once and liked it. I haven't, but don't worry, I can take it. I ride the Piro every day. If you say so, here you go, man. He presents a large cap-shaped object on the palm of his hand. Very odd looking. Not so sure about this. Wait, why shouldn't I be sure? Because it's an anti-radiation drug, and you're a cop. Not a post-apocalyptic scavenger. Actually, I changed my mind. I don't need any parole done. I respect okay. your decision, officer. What else can I help you with? Uh, if I need it later, I'll... I'll, uh... Deal with it. Let's quick save. Um, so is it, this is the pawn shop, so where do I get the music from? There's stuff. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh... Yes, fortunately, I still have it. 3.30 and it's yours. But, uh, Here you go, officer. I'm rich. Anything else I can do for you I'll today? Take it back. Uh... No. Oh. Like there's... All the old... It did say that, uh... It was at the pawn shop, right? Maybe we gotta go. Wait, hold on, let me go back to this. I'm going through it too fast. Um, walk back to the canal and see if you can find any tapes that could work as a melody. Then bring them back to Egghead for remixing. 
Maybe that one place over by the bridge? Hello! I am back. The yellow roses in the window, those aren't the flowers that were left for Clashé. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really... No. Yes? I'm not saying those things to him. To the left of some croissants and juice... Yeah, 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 some knickknacks, don't care about those. What's this? A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Well, we probably have some of these. Okay. Take yes. that. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Okay. I'll Here. take that. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Okay. I'll take Here. that. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Okay. I'll take Here. that. I hope Saint. Yeah, 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 we're taking everything. A colorful display of cig Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Okay. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Excuse me, I have the tear bag, but no tear. Can I still use the tear machine? No. You need tear to use the tear machine. Oh. Alright, well, I guess we're not finding it in here. Let's go here. You know what? Let's find Idiot Doom Spiral Jack. Let's go to the boardwalk. Go into the boardwalk. Back up. Let's go about here. Alright. Nope. Oh. Uh, there we go. All right, let's find this guy's jacket. She have anything good to say to me? Ways are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Okay. Hello, looking for uh, Idiot Doom's jacket. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I'm not telling you that. I felt bad. I thought I was doing a good thing. He's kicking everybody out. Poor kids, they don't even know. The scruffy haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Is little Lily your sister? Yes. Yes? yes. That's it. You're being laconic about it. Yes. The fuck? <laughs> the scruffy haired little kid laughs as though in, in agreement. The other one tells him, suddenly very serious. I'm just gonna leave now. I'm gonna leave and not talk to you anymore. Damn kids. What's this over here? Uh, that's all we need. Can I get to it? Or do I gotta walk the way around? I think I gotta walk the way around. Time to call Abigail. Hey, I'm an important official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. There's no use in yelling at drunks. He's barely holding it together. The drunk man starts coughing a really disgusting, hacking cough. Down, 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 call. Slowly his head nods off to the side and he passes out, tongue dangling from his mouth. There was little chance he'd be a reliable witness anyway. True. Tequila Sunset. I'm not trying to... I'll come back to him for... The legend! He's back! And firstly, I got smokes. No, I don't need anything from you. Okay. So anything for me to find here? I need to find homie's jacket. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but if it does, that'd be nice. Someone 
has left an unidentifiable article of clothing oh, on this railing. It smells really bad. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled oh. with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. I think this is the jacket the idiot Doom Spiral guy wanted me to find. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to have it returned. I'll take it. No, what are we doing? Buzz, hum, the electricity flows through the wires with audible power. Take it. Yeah, I'll give it back to him. Oh, dang, nice. Got some money. Have I not been back here before? A makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. That tarp will keep out neither rain nor snow nor wind. What's this? Postcard. Here's the jacket. This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. A streak with seagull shit and abnormally stiff from God knows what natural processes. You can't even tell what brand it is. This one has hell written on its back. It could not be further from the truth as the boom years in Curran, the nicest district of Revachal West, is enjoying a sun-drenched day. Tall and handsome buildings rise from the riverside, steel, iron, and yellow limestone with cloud shadows sliding on the facades. A coin-operated weighing machine. Hasn't been used for a decade. Whoa! Glasses. Uh, whose idiotic idea were square and beige plastic frames anyway? Beige is a color that does not look good on anyone. Not to mention that seeing the world through these exceedingly thick lenses feels almost nauseating. My perception down. What do the other glasses do? That I have equipped. Minus one visual calculus. Vagrants have recently painted the tarp red. Water drips from it. Seventy-nine cents. A big wine canister. It's open and empty. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Kim, what's that smell? Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. Careful there. These floorboards look rotten and weak. That's okay. Who are you, sneaky bastard? There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter. Is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles, too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. The lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads, Shish Kebab Revachol. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. Who are you? A man lies on the boardwalk. Oh, he's His dead. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. 
Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Two attending squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. A cool leather jacket with a bolt of blue? Oh no. This sounds terribly familiar. Search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build. Age, approximately 50 to 60 years. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? <clears throat> no, just as one at the back of his head. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole and you would have never found him. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles forgotten near the coin-operated viewer. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum, too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way he came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? A dead working class man with a bottle in his hand? Don't deceive yourself. You know who this is. We know who this is. It's the working class woman's missing husband dead on the boardwalk. I found him. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? The leather jacket pointed at the man's clothes. It matches her description perfectly. Bottles all around him. She said he was drinking somewhere in Martinez. The library card he was supposed to return a book. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. 
Uh, what do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Could be related to the lynching. Do you think he was drunk? Yeah. Oh, yes. So you turn on the odds. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Uh, what about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the parks. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and related to the murder case. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with them? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on, what about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. You're right, I don't see anything criminal here. Let's leave it at that. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. Uh... All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Okay. So got some, some things here. I got level up. Uh, let's think about maybe putting logic up. Shivers is low. Raise the hair on your neck. Tune into the city. Don't think I've done anything with this one. Uh, reaction speed. The quickest to react. Connect to Station 41. Understand cop culture. Hunters and gut feeling. Let's do that one. Then we got some photo library card. A library card from a pocket of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's still slightly damp to the touch. The cover. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Uh, look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Look at the backside. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 5511 or visit us at Moreau Street. 78 general business hours 900 to 1800 good we should give them a call from my kinema see if we can learn anything about billy mejon okay so did body on the boardwalk call station call jam rock find dead bodies everywhere this coin operator viewer has been out of order for years you know what? I think that's going to bring us to a wrap for this episode. Please make sure that if you enjoyed it, you already know. Make sure you come back for the next episode. Hit the like, subscribe, do what you got to do. You already know the, the you know the deal. And uh, we're about uh, 2100. We get into that 22 hundos because you know we got some people to meet then. So make sure you come back, see if we get to 22 hundos, and see if we meet the people that we need to. And we also got to figure out the mystery of this new dead body. We find them everywhere. Until then, y'all. Peace.